Hey guys, Sock here from Sock e Tech, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about Samsung One UI 3.0 with Android 11. Now, the public beta of One UI 3.0 is being released to the world slowly, and I have it on my Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra right here. So let me go to the settings. I'm going to go all the way down. I'm going to go into my About Phone, and I'm going to tap on Software Information, and as you can see, we have One UI 3.0 and Android 11. Let's tap that a couple times, and there we have the Android 11, as you can see. So that is great. In this video, let's take a look at top 10 features of One UI 3.0. Now, the very first feature I want to talk about is something that I've been waiting for for a long time, and that is simply double tap to make the phone sleep, okay? Now, let's double tap to wake it up. And as you can see, we do have a new fingerprint sensor uh, animation right there. So that's something new. It's not the top 10, but it's just something new to look at. But as far as the double tap to sleep feature is concerned, all you want to do to activate this is go to the settings and then go into advanced features and then scroll down over to motions and gestures. You click on it and now you have it right here, double tap to sleep. So we had this one and this one. With this one, the picture is now complete. Double tap to make it sleep. Fantastic. Let's move on to the next tactic. The next thing I want to talk about is a new addition to the notifications slash quick toggles panel. So let me launch a music player. Let's go for Google Music. Okay. So we have it right there. I'm going to tap on play music. Let me just play any music in here. Let's say, say no thanks. I'm going to play something right here. Okay. Now when you're playing something here and when you pull the panel down, you will in fact see a controller on the top right here. Now on the top corner, on the right, there's a little arrow. You can tap on it. It expands the player a little bit more. From here, I can go to the next track. I can play, pause stuff. I can do thumbs up, thumbs down right from here, from the panel. Additionally, if I retap this button here, that circular button, it allows me to pick where I want to play my media on. So right now it is playing on Saki 20 Ultra, which is this smartphone, but I can also have it play on other Bluetooth devices and they'll show up right here. If I have any Bluetooth players connected here, they'll show up at the bottom. I can click on that and the music is going to transfer from playing from these speakers to whatever is listed at the bottom. So all you do is tap that button. Like I said, you expand it, you tap the button, and choose whatever media you want to play. Now, while you're in this setting, you can also tap on this one. You can use the music share option, uh, play music on your friend's Bluetooth speaker or headphones, all right? So you have them right here conveniently placed. You can also tap on the settings and go into the settings and you can modify things like this. So you can say, use while phone is locked. So control the media panel even while your phone is in fact locked. You can show the shortcuts show earbuds when available, but let me do that right now. Let me lock up the screen and see what we see over here. Double tap and there's that controller. So I can use it over here as well. So that is absolutely fantastic. Let's move on to the next tag. Now, one of the best features that's on this uh, One UI 3.0 is in the phone application. So you'd go to your phone application, you tap on this one here, you go to your settings and you have the call background option. You tap on it and you can put a brand new background in all your actual calls. First, you can tap and change the layout. You can have it centered or you can have it broken down into two sides. So that's fine. And then you can choose a background. You can have a video background. You can have a still background or you can go into your gallery and pick any background that you want. So let's go over here and pick a nice one. All right. So here's one. Uh, for the outdoors, so I'm going to tap on this one. Okay, so that can be my background image when somebody gives me a call. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to tap on call back on apply. Okay, and now I'm going to call myself from the other phone. Let's do that right now. All right. Absolutely, absolutely fantastic little tactic. All right, let me turn that off. All right, let's move on to the next top 
feature. Now, this feature here is one of my favorite features. I've actually been waiting for this thing and it is finally here. So when I launch my YouTube application, let's say I'm playing a video, okay? Now when you exit that video, obviously you get the picture in picture view and you can put this anywhere you want on the screen. But the problem is in the past, this thing was just way too small. So if I was doing something else and this was just playing here, it's easy to hear but hard to see what's happening if I wanna glance at it. Now what you can do is you can tap the corner, press the corner and expand the size just a little bit and you can put this anywhere that you want. Now it's a larger screen and it's gonna be easier for me to actually see. And of course you can take this and you can put it anywhere you want as usual or when you're done with it, you can just grab it, exit out and you're good to go. Also when you press and hold on certain icons, it brings up the shortcut menu. Now this menu has seen an overhaul, but I'm really liking this one right here. So if there's any application that has a built-in widget that you can dump onto the screen, you can now access it by pressing and holding. So for example, let me look for the weather application, it's right there. If I press and hold right over here, you can see at the bottom, because this application has widgets enabled for it, I can access widgets right from here, and I can swipe over, choose the one that I want, and I can tap on add. It's gonna dump it to the screen after I pick my location, Look at that, so easy to just dump it onto the screen if that application actually supports a widget. Now, for example, if I were to go up here, PayPal has widgets as well, so if I press and hold, as you can see, again, we see that option, but the phone does not have widgets, so we're not gonna see it right there, okay? Uh, but if I were to tap on this one, I get access to all my widgets and just, boom, add them onto the home screen instead of pinching here and going inside, all right. Now the next feature comes in the form of bubbles. Now when I go into my notifications uh, settings screen, so it's gonna be right here, that's the notifications, you tap on it, okay? Now when you go down just a little bit and go into advanced settings, you tap on it, and what you can do is you can pick the floating icons option. You can go from bubbles or you can go to Samsung's own smart pop-up view, but the bubbles is brand new Android 11 feature that is now in here as well. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna send myself uh, a text message, okay? So I'm gonna say hi to myself, just send a text message. So I just got a brand new message, and what I can do is, it says here, you can open the conversations as bubbles from the quick panel. So I'm gonna pull on the quick panel, okay? And there's that text message right here. I can expand it just a little bit, and then you see a little icon right here, okay? It looks like a window icon. When I tap it, it expands the conversation in a bubble view, just like Windows Messenger. So when I tap on this one, it can be minimized. This is just a regular text message, and I can put it anywhere on the screen as I want. When I wanna continue a conversation, just tap on it, and it's right there. And I send this away. So that's fantastic. Again, just to be clear, you go to your settings, notifications, advanced settings, okay? And again, floating icons. This is an existing feature Bubbles is the Android 11 feature that allows you to have a messenger-like, Facebook messenger-like bubbles on your phone. We also have some brand new privacy security feature. If I go into my settings, and if I uh, scroll down over to the uh, privacy, which should be here, right here, on the top we have a brand new menu known as the Permission Manager. Now when I tap this guy, it gives me a breakdown of all the applications that are using permissions to certain applications. So for example, let's see how many applications have access to my camera. I tap it and I get a full list. So all these applications here have access to my camera. So what I can do if I don't want one of these applications for privacy reasons not to have access to the camera, I would tap on it, I would say deny, and now that application does not have access to my camera. The same thing goes, you can do for microphone. 21 applications have access to my microphone. That's crazy. I can go in here, for example, to Chrome. I don't know why it has access. I just deny it, okay? So Chrome cannot use the microphone on my phone. So you can do this with all these options. As you can see, phone, location, all these applications have access to my location. That's just crazy. I can disable on the go 
as I desire. All right, so that is the new permissions manager. Now, now one more thing I like personally, if you tap on the recents button, now we have a slight animation to it. So as you can see, we have a little effect as I move back and forth uh, between these windows. Normally, they're all the same size, but in this case, as I move over, this one becomes smaller as this one becomes larger. So that's another feature that I'm liking. I always like newer animations and a slightly newer look. Now, one more thing I'm gonna show you is a visual change. I like it personally. When I pull this down, there is a sense of translucency here so you can see the background a little bit and there's a strong blur right here. And also, when I were to if I were to turn on my dark mode, okay, let's go over here, should be right there. We have the same sense of translucency in the background. So when I pull this down, instead of being a solid black as it is on One UI 2.5 or 2.1, this one is kind of see-through. And again, if I enable or disable the dark mode, I get that sense of translucency here as well. So I do like that. One more really cool thing that we have is if I go to my settings and if I go into my notifications, all right, what you can do is you can scroll down, go into your advanced settings, and from here, you can access all your notification history all day long, okay? So if you miss something, you can come back here. This is the recently dismissed notifications, and that's the last 24-hour notifications. They're all categorized, so if you want to expand them, you just tap on it, and you'll see what happened for that notification. So this area catches all notifications all day, and it serves it to you in case you need to go in there and see if you missed something important. So that is absolutely fantastic. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. In this video, I wanna to cover top 10 features of One UI 3.0 with Android 11. There will be more videos. If you guys wanna see something particular, drop a comment down below and let me know. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. For now, have a fantastic day, all right?